All right, welcome to me giving you my overview and first thoughts of Garuda Linux finally running, fully configured the way that I, I think I like it and will use it moving forward. So first off, none of this is financial, legal, or business advice. This is not uh, me telling you exactly which Linux distribution you should use, but I am here to say that you probably should consider using some form of Linux instead of Windows and instead of Mac OS. I have my reasons for for endorsing Linux over Windows and over Mac OS, but they and uh, to, to summarize them basically, it has to do with privacy, user data privacy, as well as just general privacy when using applications. Mac OS has been confirmed to send telemetry data or to at least log all of the application usage and send that on regular intervals every single day to Apple. And you might think, okay, that's harmless. That's just Apple. That's not third party advertisers who have that data. But your problem is you can't prove that. You don't know. You don't know for sure how that's being used, but it is being aggregated by Apple. They are aggregating your data. Full stop. There, there's no disputing that. They're doing that. Linux, on the other hand, uh, you can inspect whether or not there are any packets being sent out of your operating system and whether or not it's everything is staying here locally on your machine. This does a couple of things. This helps you have peace of mind knowing that your user data is your own. And it also helps the operating system run faster because there aren't a bunch of functionally spyware apps running in the background, slowing down your computer. So I love Linux for that reason. Now, I've tried Ubuntu, I've tried Debian, I've tried Fedora. I haven't tried many distributions outside of those three because those are the most popular and most well-supported Linux distributions. Of course, you know, I guess randomly I have tried CentOS and I, I have used, I guess, some other server-oriented distributions. And I think at some point I'm going to have to be using some version of BSD, right? FreeBSD or OpenBSD on servers in the future. But that's a different application. For a desktop daily driver, I choose something more like this. Now, this looks like, you know, it looks like something out of a movie, like a video game, whatever, like a TV show, CSI, like, oh, look at all the applications. This guy's Hacker Man, which is a joke, right? Anybody who actually uses hardcore Linux or, or BSD sees this and thinks, gross, vomit in my mouth just a little bit. It just looks too candy coated, right? And it's called Garuda Linux, but the team themselves call this the Dragonized KDE desktop. They've made it intentionally over the top eye candy level neon and drop shadows and transparencies and wobbling windows. Let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, wobbling, wobbling windows, because when you move stuff, it's got sort of ragdoll physics or jello physics, right? So when you when you move it, depending on where you drag the window from, I'll drag it from down here. See that? It kind of squashes and stretches depending on where you pulled it from. So kind of an interesting thing. But here's some stats about this system, right? It's an older Ryzen 7, 1700, 16 core system, right? Or 16 thread system, just a GTX 1060, 6 gig GPU, not super fancy and only air quotes, only 24 gigs of RAM. So for a desktop workstation, this gets the job done. And as far as Linux goes, this flies, right? This is more than enough to run most versions of Linux. Now that said, I haven't even opened any applications except for screen recording. And I've got almost four gigs of memory used. Yikes. For Linux, that's kind of heavy duty. But in today's modern desktop landscape with 24, 32, or 64 gigs of RAM becoming kind of a normal everyday, like daily driver profile, it's not that bad, right? It, you could do worse for sure. Full tilt running various applications for media editing and photo editing, right? I've got uh, the GIMP right here, GNU Image Manipulation Program and Caden Live as well, plus OBS. Having all three of these running at the same time would not come close to hitting that 24 gig ceiling. So I'm pretty comfortable running this amount of hardware, this level of hardware with this version of Linux. This is enough. And I, I mean, could I do more? Sure, I, I could. I, could I build a system that's more robust than this? Sure, I could. But when I bought these components, I got them at the right price. They've served me very well. And with the right version of Linux, they will continue to serve me very well into the future. So first things first, as I open up, there we go. 
as I open up that, now instead of tabbing to complete that, I use the right arrow key. When I first open up my terminal, I'm going to do some update commands. Um, instead of using uh, the APT, right, package manager, I've got Pacman because this is a variant of Arch Linux. So sudo pacman dash capital S Y U will update my repositories and install any new packages. I've already done this today and in the last couple of hours, in fact, so not really much to see here. But it, it didn't take me very long, right? Eight seconds to figure out A, whether or not there were any new packages and B, if there were, begin the installation. It's, it's pretty great. But now I don't have to worry about this being done in the background without my permission or having any third party say like, oh, we need to push this update because, you know, because security uh, or think of the children. Nope, it, it's all right here. I get to choose when this happens. So close that down. And uh, let's take a look at my system monitor resources now. Was that very much? There we go. Looks like, nope, not too much. Not too much being used. What I love also is that with a little bit of configuration, I had to add this right under my options, tell it that I wanted it to show me the GPU right here, GPU usage in a line chart. Um, but once I did that, now I can see whether or not GPU is being used. And on OBS, it is. I've got the NVIDIA drivers successfully installed. And so I'm using the NV encoder inside of OBS. This is what I would use on Windows to help decrease CPU utilization and help my system run that much faster. See right here, CPU utilization is still very low. I've got less than 3% CPU utilization overall. And um, it's great. It gives me the opportunity to use those CPU cores for other stuff that may need that. And my desktop isn't slowing down either, even with those spikes in encoder usage. It's still not video RAM usage or other sides of the GPU. So yeah, that's that's in place too. The other applications that you see down here on the dock, first off, the dock itself is customizable. I was able to pin all these applications that I use every day, right? Console, I, I need to run updates. I need to check for things using the terminal. I don't use it all the time. I don't use the command line all the time, but I like being reminded that I should use it more often. So it's right there, reading left to right, it's a priority. File browser for being able to check for downloads and other things, which of course I could always use the command line to find as well, but it's there if I need a graphical user interface. System monitor to tell me what things are happening there, but if uh, but if I don't need that running, I'm not gonna run it as some kind of an, a, you know, an applet or like a, a widget on the desktop. That's just wasteful in my, uh, my personal view. So that's for me to turn off and on as I see fit. I get a lot of news from Twitter, so that's a priority. I know, don't judge. But this is a separate electron uh, electron image by Native Fire and the, the Native Fire plugin, but it, it already runs as a binary. I was able to install this using the package management system or the software install system. On that note, let me show you what I mean right there. Uh, there we go, software. There we go, add or remove software. This guy right here. So I got a bunch of installed applications. I can even show you very quickly what's all installed. Uh, you know, various hackable text editor, right? I like Atom, Atom Editor. It's called me old school, but I think learn Python the hard way, a hard way that book recommended Atom a while back. And I just haven't looked back since I started there. Audacity for audio editing, if I need it. Blender, Clementine, just, you know, old habit. Got it just in case. Cura for 3D printing. Discord as, you know, for, for, for obvious reasons. A light Bitcoin wallet client. Element, um, which I have not set up yet or configured it, but I will at some point in the future. FileZilla, Flameshot, which is just a, a better screenshot taker. It's just essential when, when you do media production like I do. So got that installed. FreeCAD, you know, again, for 3D modeling or CAD modeling for, for SolidWorks. Handbrake for transcoding. Bunch of other stuff that, that is useful to me as a, as a media creator, but also, you know, the Monero wallet, a few other multi-coin wallets as well. Um, and so a lot of usual suspects here by way of media creation, but also privacy, right? Tor, Tor browser as a binary just runs, runs very nicely. YubiKey and some, some other YubiKey related tools, but a bunch of really great applications that help improve my privacy and my daily workflow. If I were to scroll down though, this is kind of lazy loading. You'd see there, there are a lot of tools that I installed, a whole lot that I installed. 
So the initial setup took some time. If I wanted to add more though, I could go to browse instead of my installed applications. I wanted to you know, visually browse, go through all these categories. That would make it a little bit easier right there. So I've already got some that I've installed. Those are shown up top. I can scroll down and look for even more, right? Color picker might come in handy. Maybe we might, we might go back and add that. Um, in fact, for the purposes of this video, why not? I'll click on a download button and it is now a pending operation, but I can do more. I can add more to that queue and we'll add more operations. If I were to delete something, um, let's see, I need that display cal. Hmm, I need the, I need a profile info, profile loader, all that for display cal, all of the display cal related stuff. Hmm. And all the color oriented stuff. That's, that's very helpful for me. Let's just say right now, I don't need free CAD, which is true. I, I don't at this moment. Ah, no, it's not true. I do need it. Re. And I need a 3D LUT maker, whatever. Um, we'll, we'll go to another category. Maybe I don't need something like, oof, hate to do it to you, but yep, MPV media player. Don't use it, don't need it. So now I've got two pending operations. We can click on apply and I'll have to authenticate. Just like I did when I was doing updates from the terminal. It tells me what the operations are that are going to happen, right? That it'll remove not only MPV media, media player, but also, there we go, see orphaned, uh, orphaned repository packages right there. So yeah, this, these would be dependencies that I no longer need. It'll remove those as well. And then it'll install color picker, click on apply. And it's doing that in the background. I can also see real time what happens. It's already done by the time I click through to see it, but it's, it's that simple and it's graphical. Move from this, this view back to here, the overview, I can go to updates and that'll check for updates in the same way that I put in pseudo pacman dash syu but i already did that so there's nothing to see here all right that's the brief overview i've got things laid out here the way i like them if i want to customize the doc i can right click and even edit the doc and do all kinds of uh editing to this doc it's provided by by the latte functionality right latte doc so you can add this to other linux distros too but it's already pre-installed and is the default here that is my user experience so far in a nutshell. It's really fast, really high performance, and I can see myself using this as a daily driver for many months or maybe even years to come. All right, if you have more questions about the usability of Garuda Linux, please ask me questions down in the comment section or take a look at the videos you see up here. I've got a, an overview, both the long version and the TLDR of installing the air quotes, heroic games launcher and connecting it to my Rockstar account so I could run Grand Theft Auto 5 on Linux. If you can believe that, it's possible. And I did it. So there's proof in that video, as well as the Steam native launcher and all of the Linux native applications and games that run there. So those two videos are available for your perusal. Take a closer look and you'll see why I wanted to use Garuda Linux. Um, spoiler alert, the fact that CUDA and Wine is so well implemented on Garuda Linux is the biggest reason that I chose it. If these games run, well, guess what else runs? I'll give you a little spoiler here. DaVinci Resolve, which is a high-end video editing application that normally struggles on Linux installs. Other versions of Linux really struggle to make DaVinci Resolve work its magic. Not so on Garuda Linux. On Garuda Linux, it runs just fine. Um, in fact, it, it runs swimmingly. So all the various tabs run as you'd expect with perfect CUDA support for hardware acceleration. So yeah, that's that's a bit of, bit of my spoiler there. So if it can run high-end games, it can definitely run high-end digital content creation software, which is more important to me as a creator. All right, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. Let me know what questions you have. Let me know if this was helpful and if you'd like me to do more high-level overviews like I did here on Garuda Linux, maybe of some other Linux distributions or some other technologies that you'd like to learn about. 
Thank you for being subscribed. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face. Remember to stay private and mind your biz. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you want to be notified of videos like this in the future, first off, click subscribe, press the bell icon. Additionally, you can sign up for the Mind Your Biz email newsletter. That'll give you exclusive access to certain freebies, notifications for deals within the cryptocurrency mining space, as well as some of our flash sales for merchandise, which you can buy with cryptocurrency. That's right. It's the only cryptocurrency merch that you can buy with cryptocurrency. We practice what we preach. As always, thank you so much for watching. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face, and I will see you in the next one.